All right, this is second grade, module seven, lesson 24. And in this lesson, students are gonna learn how to draw a line plot uh, to represent the collected data. Uh, the important thing is this line plot is not just some sort of, sort of statistical tool. It's also a way to connect our students to that number line, which is so important in second grade and in uh, upper grades, third grade, fourth and fifth grade, especially allowing our students to eventually connect fractions to that number line. So the number line is really important in Eureka Math for a reason, because it's a thread, a common thread in all the grades. So let's get started. So what we've got here is a bunch of data, and it looks like we've collected um, hand spans. And you could see the number of students who have those particular hand spans. We've collected data for two through eight uh, inches. And we see that nobody has voted or has a hand span of two or three inches. But then we start having our hand spans here. So clearly, this four is a small hand while this eight is a large hand, right? And so uh, down here, the, cl the classic things, requirements for a line plot, well, you need to have a title. And oftentimes, the title is going to be related in some way to the table up here. And you can see hand spans of students, and so we've got hand spans right here. So there's our connection, plus we're talking about students. The other thing is every line plot needs to have a nice little uh, ledger or an index or um, a legend, I mean, down here saying what are these numbers, and these are hand spanned in inches. We could have just said inches. We didn't have to use the word hand span. Hand span. Now you'll notice we this particular line uh, plot starts at zero and goes through eight even though we don't have any uh, votes, so to speak, up until four. So really, instead of this line plot, if we wanted to, we could have said, we're going to start here at zero, do a dash dash, meaning we're skipping a bunch of numbers, and we're going to start at four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we wanted to, we could have, and that's a horrible looking line plot because it's not a nice straight line like down here, um, but we could have done a, a line plot like this, and I'm going to make that a, there, better. And so that the point is that little dash dash says, hey, we've skipped some numbers and we're going to go straight to four and because that's really all we have. But they've shown us all the, of the numbers, and that's perfectly fine. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to make our little X's. And so one person has a, a four-inch hand span, so we're going to just go one X. And then we see that, oh my goodness, seven people have a five-inch hand span. Now, parents and teachers, give your, set, your students a moment to count and identify nice little shortcuts. For example, if we're counting these tallies here, we do not want students to count all the individual tallies. We want them to recognize this is a five and two and know that this is seven, all right? Or at worst, <laughs> we want students to say five, six, seven, all right? Or down here, we want students to be able to say five plus another five is 10 or five, 10. All right. So talk about those nice, efficient shortcuts for how to count your tallies. And then go ahead and start your putting in your X's. So we've got seven for five inches. So we're going to do seven X's. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we've got ten for six inches. So that's going to be one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to make those in a different color so we don't lose them inside that text right there. So there's there's our ten. And then we've got uh, three for seven inches. So we're going to go one, two, three. And then we've got one for eight inches. And there is our line plot. 
Now, your job is to say, hey, what are some things that we can say about this? Well, we see that most people voted six. We can see because I was really careful about how I made my X's, we can see that three more people voted for or have six-inch hand spans than five um, because I, I carefully lined up my X's so that we could make that kind of uh, comparison. Now, heads up. Kids won't be able to do that because they're probably not going to be able to make their X's uh, line up the way I did. And we could see that hardly anybody did the low and the high, and a lot of people did the middle. Parents and teachers, if you want, you could talk about a bell curve because that's a beautiful thing as well. And then we can also, this would be a good time to say, hey, this is waste, wasted space. So really, this could have been a line plot that we chose to use instead. And the last slide for this video, it says use the data to make a line plot. And you'll notice, hey, they didn't give us anything. They've removed some scaffolding. They still gave us the title, Length of Right Foot, uh, in, of students in Miss De Francisco. Uh, Francisco. I'm going to say Francisco's class. Um, okay, so what we need to do is we need to look at our data, and we see that our data starts at 17 and ends at 23. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to say, well, here's zero, but we're going to skip, and we're going to start at 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. So there is our line plot. Now, I could just draw an arrow to say, hey, and the numbers would keep going, uh, but that arrow isn't really necessary. And now it's time for us, oh, and then really what we should do also, we should do down here, is, and we should say that this is not just a line plot, this is in centimeters. We don't need the word line plot. And so that's in centimeters. And now we're ready to start making um, the X's for all, all of our data. And again, we may run out of room. This title might get in the way, so that's all right. So we have one person who voted for 17. So let me do it in blue. One person who voted for 17. Two people who voted for 18. We have four people who voted for 19. We have six people who voted for 20. And I'm trying to line up my X's. So the second story X's and third story X's and the fourth story, kind of like a building, um, they're all lining up. I'm trying to do that. Uh, so 21 has also six. So I'm going to try and make that the exact same size as the 20, and then we have 22, it has two, so one, two, and then 23 only has one person who voted for it, and that is our line plot. Now, what could we do with our line plot? Well, the line plot is we can start using our line plot to answer a bunch of questions, and so we could say things like um, describe a pattern that you see in the line plot, and once again, we're going to see that bell curve, that beautiful bell curve. And we're allowed to say bell curve to second graders. When you have hardly anything on the ends and a big fat middle, that's called a bell curve because it kind of looks like a bell. How many feet are longer than 20 centimeters? We can answer those questions. So these are the kinds of questions that we can start using or answering using our line plot. And here is a beautiful one. Parents and teachers, let your students display their individuality and allow them to differentiate themselves by allowing them to create their own questions. And that wraps up Grade 2, Module 7, Lesson 24. We're drawing line plots to represent our data, and we're connecting it to a number line.